Walking through the fields overlooking Stark Bay, it's hard to imagine the devastation inflicted on this landscape in the dark days of 1944. Not all exercises at Slapton went without incident. A British and Allied bombardment was dramatically halted. US soldiers ashore were taking heavy casualties. Soldiers hid under Slapton Bridge and in surrounding buildings to avoid the carnage. Under some heavy fire, the troops would have landed at Slapton Beach. They would have then fought their way up the Shingle Beach, across the marshy, boggy lay, and up onto dry land. This is the bridge over Slapton Lee. It was under this bridge where some US troops ran to hide during the bombardment. They would have been dropped off at the beach, run up, and then dived underneath the bridge for cover as the British and American warships bombed this area. Where we are here now is a perfect firing position out over across the fields and then on to their ultimate destination which were the villages. The vast scale of live fire training at Slapton combined with an often inaccurate and sporadic use of weapons would surely have led to fatalities. Right on the edge of the barn is this uh, remains of a US barrage rocket from uh, fired from landing craft. Now it's uh, it's it's come in. Uh, my feelings are that it's been ploughed up and thrown in the hedge here because it's full of soil. But um, you know, relics are everywhere here. We've heard about this barn and read about it in many books. You can see it here behind me, it's ruined now. But uh, in World War II, it was a complete barn. Once the soldiers landed at Slapton, they advanced across the lake and up through the fields. They all of a sudden became under bombardment from British and American warships. It's rumored that several of the soldiers sheltered in this barn, which was later destroyed by uh, shell fire. We're going to have a look around the barn now and see what else we can find. We've already found the rocket outside, but let's see what we can find inside. Now Dave and I have made our way into the barn and we've had a good look around. Um, and we found this beaten up 50 calibre projectile now this has hit something really hard and it's peeled the jacket right back. Um, a really nice find. So Andy and I have just been field walking around the barn and we found something rather interesting here. What is it Andy? This is a base of a um, naval bombardment rocket uh, that would go with the section we found earlier this uh, would have the central column here was the venturi which was the exhaust port for the rocket uh, really nice find Dave and I have just uh, wandered around the barn a little more and we've literally just stumbled upon this uh, nice field find here this is a remains of a fuse from a American 75 millimeter high explosive round. We'll show you one of these in more detail in another part of our video. Here we have um, a tray 
a nice little collection of some of the iron harvest on a farmland local to the D-Day practice area. Uh, we've got a fine selection of items in here. These uh, are um, naval bombardment rockets. These are the, uh, the thin bodies. Uh, we have the base plates here, which would have sat just inside at the base with the rocket Venturi that would have come off the back here that has since rusted away. Um, there's probably some bits of fuse from one of these in here somewhere, I imagine. There seems to be most things. Um, what else do we have? We have a rather large and heavy section of US five inch naval round. Wow, that looks heavy duty. That is quite a piece. Yeah, look at the thickness of the body there and you can see how it's um, been deformed. Um, some bits of British naval fuse. Um, we have these are pieces of US 75 millimeter rounds or sections of fuse from 75 millimeter rounds. The rest of the fuse rots away uh, as it's made of a light alloy. So this is often all that you find. Right. So really quite a selection of um, another bit of a British naval fuse. Lovely little collection Indeed. of stuff. Indeed. Um, Andy and I have had a fantastic day today here at Slapton. We've just finished looking around this old uh, barn area where US troops, after they swarmed across the beach, mustered and uh, hid from the uh, bombardment from the British and American naval vessels uh, out in the bay. We found some brilliant items that Andy was telling you about. There's plenty more around here. The farmer finds it all the time ploughed up. But uh, it's a clear indication of the fact that the Americans did fire upon themselves as part of the exercise. And uh, it's even more clear to me that US soldiers did indeed die as part of the bombardment. Madame, this.